What's up guys and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Robbie Cassidy and I'm your host today and today we're going to discuss recurring ankle injuries. So before I jump into it I want to talk a small bit about my new foundational mobility program that's out at the moment. So it's an entry level program for people who have a good understanding of mobility but just want something structured that they can follow for a couple of weeks. So it's a six week program and it can be extended into a 12 week program because at the start there's beginner exercises and they move into the advanced ones. So if you feel like you've already done a good bit of mobility in the past, it could be good then to have a look at the advanced, see if you're able from and start with those. So it's a nice mix of mobility, strength and breathing drills as well to try get uh, or take a holistic approach to mobility. I also discuss sleep behavior and sleep habits. I discuss hydration and I discuss general movement as well and how to incorporate all that to get the best out of it. So that's available on my website at themobilitytutor.com. Coming back to this episode, guys, I wanted to talk just because it's, it's February now, it's time of the year that people will be getting back into training a small bit more. Obviously, it's uncertain times and we don't know when we're going to get back into it fully but preparing yourself for the year ahead is really important and this goes across the board this is for people who play sports competitively if you just if you're a runner let's say um, or run marathons if you are a hiker anything like that you if you haven't yourself you definitely know someone who has sprained their ankle or who has sprained their ankle a couple of times or consistently sprains their ankle every year or a couple of times a year now it is such a it's an annoyance of an injury in that it it happens out of nowhere seemingly anyway it feels like you're just going along and then you sprain an ankle you could just be stepping off a footpath so it can happen at any time at all and because of that you can be out for two three weeks depending on obviously how severe it is so it's really important it's really annoying for people to be training away perfectly and then get an ankle injury uh, and be out for a couple of weeks and miss your miss your training and some in some cases miss games so what I want to look at is what can you do obviously injuries can't be prevented completely you have to take that into account because of the chaotic environment that we live in every day and especially on the sports field but you can take measures to reduce your risk for injuries uh, and you can obviously there's different things that are going to predispose you more to an injury and you can say your bone structure is one of the main ones. It's very hard to change. Uh, your your makeup, I suppose, your genetics as well, your muscles, strengths, uh, imbalances, or not exactly imbalances, but your your muscle strength in different areas, your coordination, all that is going to make up uh, a huge part of it. So it's looking at what you can actually do to build up or build weak areas to reduce your risk overall. Now, in relation to sports, why are ankle injuries such a common thing? And it has most likely to do with the chaotic nature uh, or chaotic environment that you're in. And the fact that you can't really plan anything too much uh, in that if there's a fella coming at you or a lady coming at you and you're trying to get out of the way, you step out of the way, but then you get hit from the opposite side and you might open up into a small bit of space, but then you notice that the ankle goes. Or it could be end of the game and you're tracking back and out of nowhere you just sprain an ankle or you roll over on the ankle and you don't know how it happened. So it could be to do with just the, the chaotic environment itself. But then we also have to look at the boots that you're wearing and the playing surface. So some people prefer studs, some people prefer blades on their boots. I don't have a massive preference. I usually, just in general, I, I prefer blades uh, on my boots. I, it's not anything to do with performance or anything like that. It just It's something, it's my own preference. But there is definitely a small difference in it. And someone who has trained with boots for years or who has trained with studs for years and then transitions to blades, sometimes you'll notice that they will pick up a few injuries that they aren't used to and vice versa as well on the opposite side. So it's important to look out at that and what you're training on all year and if you change that then at the end of the year. So that obviously you have to take that into account. The next thing then is surface that you're running on or that you're, that you're training on. So if you're training on the road, obviously it's difficult to... Uh, if you're running it, let's say when it's dark out, it's hard to see what you're doing or where you're going. And sometimes if there's a car coming, you might step in and step into a pothole and you've your ankle sprained. So it's a lot better. And I must say it is a lot better to sprain your ankle than to have it translating up along the chain and it coming out at your knee or your hip. Um, so it's obviously I, I would say that 
even though it is an annoyance, it's probably one of the better ones that you would prefer to get as opposed to the other injuries, more severe ones. So plane surface is a big one. Uh, and the next thing you want to look at is astro turf as well. It's a hard surface a lot of the time and you can have some really good astros or you can have some really poor astros. And that you will notice that there at times if people are training on them all year and when they go to the pitch there can be a few more injuries uh, related to that. Now, the exact science behind it, I couldn't tell you exactly what it is, but I'd say it's the, there's no give in the astro turf at all. And there is a bit of give in the pitch and the same if you're moving from a pitch where there is, you can you can get away with some movements that you wouldn't really get away with on the astrotuff because it's so much harder. And when you stand on the ground, your your foot is usually anchored to the ground. So you obviously have to look at playing surfaces as well and find out what, uh, or know, if you notice what one you're more injury prone at, you obviously have to take different precautions then as well. Now, why when you injure an ankle once, why is it so common to injure it again and to have recurring injuries then. There's a few things that, that play into the issue of an ankle injury and, and, and what what causes them. And obviously, if you had an injury in the past, you're more predisposed to that injury in the future, more likely to get it again. Now, there's a lot of things that play into it and it's important to take note of them because if you note the things that are possibly leaving you at risk of it, you can take care of them Then you can hopefully reduce your risk by, I suppose, improving on all these weaknesses or weak areas. So looking at it, first thing you want to look at is after you injure an ankle, there's going to be a loss of strength around the joints uh, and that's through the muscles, tendons and the ligaments because your ankle injury or your ankle is held together obviously with, with uh, I should say, and throwing on that fascia as well. It's held together with your muscles, your your ligaments, uh, obviously the tendons across in the joint, and then you have the fascia as well all around it. Now, if you've injured it before and you don't take the proper, if you don't go through proper rehab programs, or even if you do go through a full rehab program and you get back out in the field, you're going to be more likely to injure it again because of the the breakdown in tissue that was there before. So it's important that when you do go through it and you feel like you're ready to go, that you actually continue on for another week or two with your rehab to get the best out of it and even at that you could probably extend it to I would say the entire season to actually work on it over the whole season to reduce your risk obviously as you as you go through the season now the reason I say that is that you obviously you have your healing phases like your inflammatory phase straight away after your proliferation phase and is for a couple of days, let's say after day three for a couple of weeks, and it crosses over with your remodeling phase. And your remodeling phase can go on for, like let's say in relation to an ACL uh, injury or an ACL repair, can go on for up to a year after, 12 months or 18 months after the injury. So it does take a good bit of time to get that to the best condition or as close as possible to what it was like before. And you have to think about that exact same when it comes to your ankle ligaments. Just because you're pain free in your back plane, it doesn't mean that they have completely healed up and that they're back to the same strength. That's why it's important to extend it for a couple of months after. That's the first one is that loss of strength around the joint or stability around the joint. Next one then is on top of that, you have your loss of mobility and your loss of range of motion. You'll notice that people have had multiple ankle injuries. A lot of the time will lose dorsiflexion or they'll lose plantar flexion. And dorsiflexion is when you bring your toes up towards your head Plantar flexion is when you point your toes away. So like if you go up on your tippy toes, you lose that range of motion. Now, if you're losing that range of motion, the joint has less give or has less uh, ability to move when you are back out on the pitch and when you are playing again. And if it does have that effect, you can see that if you get into a position that um, maybe an extra few degrees of range might reduce your risk. If you don't have that range, the force that's transmitted through the ankle has to find a way has to move to some has to go somewhere okay so and it's going to find the weakest point so a chain is obviously only as strong as the weakest link with this if you think about the force coming through the ankle if you don't have that dorsiflexion or even if you don't have the same plantar flexion when you're when you're pushing off and and then you know if you're if you're starting for a sprint the force is more like more than likely to go out through the weakest point and your weakest point is going to be the area that you have injured before. 
So getting your range of motion back to as good as normal, or as, as good as you can, and getting your mobility to hold joint moving properly again is going to be extremely important to reduce your risk overall now on top of that you have proprioception and balance as well and the two of these are going to be intertwined and balance is made up of so many different two different uh, processes or, or senses in the body so in your balance alone you have to take into account your visual field so your eyes and you have to take into account your vestibular and that's in your ear uh, it's about ba- it's a balance system in your ear basically your proprioceptive, proprioceptive system, which is your sense of where your body is in space. And so like you know where your foot is, you know where your hand is if you close your eyes and put it out to the side or where you're stepping on the ground. And even comes down to your tongue position. So you'll see a lot of time, you'll see even in, in basketball or, or basketball players are good athletes, uh, a lot of time not contact sports. But if they're getting low to the ground, if they're sidestepping, if they're moving around, they will put out their tongue and it's another balance mechanism. You're taking in more information and due to that, you have better control of your body. So I'm not saying that everyone should do that, but it definitely does play into uh, your balance as well. I'm not saying train your balance system with your tongue, obviously, either. Well, you can do, but that's not going to be the fo- main focus of your of your rehab. You could probably do better things. So looking at that, when you take all those into account, you have to see how you can test your balance as well. Okay, because you're when you've injured that area, the proprioceptors around the joint are your body's awareness of that joint is affected. It's different. There's like an imprint on your nervous system, basically, because you've injured that area. So you don't have the same unless you train it and get it back to normal. You won't have the same awareness of that joint. So it's really important to work on that and to work on your balance, work on your balance up along the chain as well, because you'll be walking differently after you injure it. So not that that's going to change your entire posture or anything, but it is important to take that into account that if it has been affected, you'd be looking to normalize it as best as possible or improve it. If it if you injured it before, it could be that there was a weakness there prior to that. So it might be important to get it better than what it was before. The other things you want to look at then are like muscle fatigue is a, is a huge and a lot of the time people are going to injure their ankle at the end of a game so or at the end of a training session when they are fatigued they're gassed they've done all the running that they can do and now it's something simple like they're jogging back and then they sprain it out of nowhere or they're after doing a really long sprint they could be cutting in and out doing all these you know agile movements or, or good agility like getting in and out between people and stopping and starting decelerating jumping landing all that stuff and then when they're jogging back then they just roll their ankle out of nowhere and that probably has more to do with muscle fatigue than anything else because that's just whole system fatigue as well not just muscle fatigue but it's important to take that into account that you may have to work on the endurance at that area other ones then would be like let's say if you're not warmed up properly and you just go straight out kicking ball or if you go straight out onto let's say a tennis court and you haven't warmed the body up properly you're going to be more likely to injure yourself in general but the body hasn't adapted to the stress that you're going to put it under or the positions that you're going to put it in it hasn't you haven't given taken the time to give yourself the best chance by warming up progressively for 5 10 15 minutes and then getting into it. Now, obviously, there's other side of things that you could just be unlucky the first time and sprain it because you were carrying something and you stepped off a, a, a step wrong and you came down your ankle and you sprained it, or you were drunk and you fell over and sprained it as well. Things like that. That's just that's unlucky. So you have to obviously try to get it better than it was before or as good as it was before when you are still going through that. The rehab principles still apply. If you've injured it before, you're more predisposed to injuring it again now the last one then and this ties into the muscle fatigue and there's obviously a lot more things that play into this these aren't the main issue these are the main issues i should say but there's a lot more things that play into it as well is load and the amount of load that you're doing so if you're training five six seven nights a week and you're not sleeping right and then you're working early mornings and you know you've a lot of stuff to do during the day your body is going to be fatigued overall and if it's fatigued overall then you're obviously at higher risk of injury anyway. 
So it's important to look at your load when you do train it. So had you been training four nights a week before that or had you been running five Ks and stuff like that for a couple of days before and then you went into a hard session or onto an Astro or you went for a mar- or went running a marathon or doing whatever, going for a f- even just a 5K and you sprain it. What was your load like before that? Because it's important to look at that as well. Load management is a, probably the biggest part of injury prevention is looking at how much you're doing. Are you doing too much? Or what are you doing too little is a, is a is a big one, but are you doing too much that you're actually increasing your risk of injury because you're not giving yourself enough time to recover? So they were kind of the main ones that are going to be playing into it. So solutions, what can you do to reduce the risk? As starting from the top and working down, like it's simple enough. Once you kind of figure out what the problems are, you can figure out what the solutions are fairly, fairly, fairly easily. So you want to build up the strength of the muscles around the joints. Now, there's a hundred ways you can do this. You could do this with resistance bands, and you know you could be doing your your calf raises and and any type of movement like that. You're going to build up the ligament strength with that and the, and the tendon stiffness as well. And you're also going to build up the muscles themselves so they're going to be more durable be able to hold that joint joint stability is obviously going to improve so it's really important to actually build those up now what you could do is like calf raises do farmer farmer carry um walking calf raises is, is one that i love it's really good it builds up strength through the whole system but you're holding heavy weights at the side of the end it's you're unstable at the top of it there's things you can do like dorsiflexion holds which are going to build the strength and tolerance of the joint itself and it's also going to build endurance if you're doing isometric holds um you're also looking at how you're also looking at 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 jumps and jump landings and doing them in controlled environments single leg double leg because most likely that's how you did the heart that's how you would injure it because you're at most risk when you're in the air and landing so you look at your jump landings as well and practice those now Improving range of motion itself, there's loads of ways you can do this. Uh, I would recommend doing it like that you're isolating it and you're bringing it into compounds so you're actually practicing getting more dorsiflexion and more plantar flexion with movements, even in like a squat. So it doesn't have to be a heavy weighted squat, but even practicing a squat and putting weight over the ankle so you can get more dorsiflexion. And then when you come out of it, coming all the way up onto your toes and then holding it for a couple of seconds to work on your plantar flexion. There's other ways you can do it short term, like working resistance bands and putting that around your ankle and um, th- like a mobilization. You can use those as well. Uh, a really, another simple one would be like foam rolling, but they're short term. So you need to know that if you are doing those, you need to build on top of those straight away after, if you want to keep the benefit long term, you have to include it in your program that you will build on that because you're going to get the short term benefits of let's say doing a mobilization with a band or foam rolling your calves, you're going to get a short-term benefit of that. So when you have that short-term benefit, maximize it and bring it into your strength training then and your mobility training. And when you are doing that, look at the foot and the ankle and the hip. Look at increasing your range of motion and your mobility around those areas. So you need to look really, it's really important to look at the foot, not just the ankle itself, because obviously the two of them work in conjunction with each other and hip as well up along the line um knee is more of a stability joint uh small bit of mobility in it but it is it is more of a, a stability joint but the foot works training the foot is really important and how you do it there's is really simple there's loads of ways you can do it and a lot of the stuff that you do for your ankle anyway are going to train the foot like those walking calf raises that i said but look at your when you are training the foot you want to look at your pronation and supination as well and that's like a high arch is supination a low arch is pronation and you want to look to get in and out of those to, so you, you can check and have a look and see that the foot is actually working properly and I would direct you towards let's say uh, Gary Gary Wayward he's excellent he's uh, What the Foot is his book now I haven't read that book myself but I've been recommended by a couple of clients they've, they've told me to, to go into it but I look at his stuff anyway I follow his stuff it's very interesting David Gray is also very good for that David Gray Rehab on Instagram he puts a lot of foot stuff up there. He talks about it a good bit. So I would point you towards those as well because getting an overall view and getting a view from different angles and seeing what other people are doing is important. So as I said, though, you are training the foot to 
move better. You're training the strength of the foot, but you're training to move better. Now, with just with those two topics alone, of what I said, they will go a long way in improving uh, your or reducing your risk. Now, other things will be improving your balance and your proprioception. And how can you do that? Like, if I asked you to, how would you improve your balance right now? What would you think? Firstly, if I asked you what would you do to improve your strength, you would lift heavier weights. This pro- I'm sure this would be the answer you would say. So if I asked you what would you do to improve your endurance, you would go for a run. Or you'd go for a run further than what you have done before. So what would you do to improve your balance? It'd be test your balance. So simple things starting out and then go into more complex uh, movements. So testing your balance, you could do like a single leg standing, single leg standing on a cushion, something like that, even standing on a single leg up on your toe and holding it for a certain amount of time. But you have to make sure that you're going until your balance is off. If you don't do that, you'll never improve on it too much. You need to find the point that you're actually falling off balance. And that's the only way that you will improve balance because the body, if it doesn't feel it needs to improve it, it's not going to improve it. So when you have pushed on past that, what else can you do? And there's loads of things you can do like vestibular circuits or you can do things like closing your eyes, uh, taking that out of it, taking different senses out of it. Plyos as well are really important. Really important. <laughs> Jeez, my voice is breaking. But yeah, plyos are really important as well because they build the tolerance, they'll build or improve range of motion, they'll build joint stability uh, and they'll also build the muscle strength. So they're Plyos are an excellent way of reducing your risk of ankle injury overall, if I was picking one thing, an excellent way, and they also improve the endurance. Now, how do you, looking on to the next thing, how do you improve the endurance of the muscles if the muscles are the issue? Now, this is something that they will improve over time, obviously. Now, you have to use your, look at your, what you're doing in terms of running, what you're doing in the gym to improve the endurance of it, because you obviously have to take it to the edge of its endurance to improve it and you need to go on beyond that a small bit more and you're looking at small muscles around the ankle and i suppose obviously up along the chain as well you're looking at all of those so they will be improving with running anyway but what i would say is take a step back and look at it from another angle and manage your load better so you're recovering better you're not just trying to always do more and more and more you're actually taking a step back and you're giving the body a chance to recover that's really important as well so that comes into load management make sure that you're not just training six days a week because you're increasing your risk of injury anyway or six or seven days a week make sure you're taking time off to let the body recover it's really really important now lastly looking at the like i talked about all the other ones belong having a specific warm-up is going to be really important and a warm-up that you say go through a couple of mobility exercises and then you move out onto the pitch and then you start testing your balance a small bit out on the pitch and then you start warming up so you're doing runs and jumps and hops and cuts and acceleration and deceleration and all that type of movement but you're taking the time to do that and then you're taking the time to do that with a ball or you're changing your your focus to an external object while you're warming up so you have to look at all these different things you can't just do your couple of exercises do your rehab go through it uh, get a, get it back out on the pitch, start kicking straight away and then wonder why when you jumped up for the first ball you came down on your ankle and you strained it. Because you haven't done anything to warm up to that first and there was no transitional period between your rehab and your return to play. Or The same goes for if you're going for a run and you had sprained it before and you had, let's say, trained a good bit that week, work was extremely stressful, you were sleeping poorly uh, and then because you're stuck for time you just go out for a run and then you're jogging along and you're not thinking you're you're feeling great and then you just step wrong and you roll the ankle and it's not just you were unlucky that time it probably has to do with all the other things that were going on in the background that play into it so that's kind of an overall view of how to reduce your risk of recurring ankle injuries and as i said you're looking at what the problem is first and then you start figuring out a couple of solutions and what you can do for it but getting a good idea of the problem and knowing when you're actually injuring them what's happening to you and was it unlucky like was it an actually uh, was it an unlucky event that you were had no um control over at all or is it something that 
there was a few things tied together and then because of that it, it came down that's what i want you to look at when you're thinking about this now if anyone has any questions on the stuff that i've discussed um definitely send them on to me on instagram because it's not the same uh when i'm on this and i'm talking and then you don't have the chance to do it straight away so definitely send them those questions on to me on instagram if you've listened to this and you're thinking i'd love to, to go into a bit more detail on that but one other thing i wanted to touch on is reducing your risk is ankle taping now is ankle taping a solution to reducing the risk of recurring injury in short it it does reduce the risk of injury sometimes for some people now the thing about it is it's not the ankle tape itself that's structurally holding your ankle together and this is this is the thing that people forget about or that people miss so it's not actually the strength of the tape that's holding your ankle together it's the feeling of the tape around your ankle that gives your body a different level of security so it makes you more aware of it now that the reason i say that is because the structure structural reinforcement of the tape usually only lasts around about 15 minutes and that's 15 minutes from the time that you got it taped so if you got it taped and then you're going out and going into a warm-up and then you're getting ready for the game or getting ready for a run all that time is taken into account and it's loosening and loosening and loosening and, and then structurally it's not giving you any advantage anymore but because your body is more aware of it with a tape around it it reduces your risk because your proprioceptors and your your muscles are more aware of it and your nervous system is more aware of it so it does it does have that effect uh, in in terms of it improves your overall awareness now what i would say is for people who are let's say prone to injuring their ankle when they're fatigued or who've had a tough week or who've had been training a good bit and need to get back to a game or something like that then it, it is probably a, a viable option to keep you going but long term do you want to tape your ankle for every game now this is a i'm sure i can be absolutely certain now when i say this that there's definitely going to be people that would argue against it but i would say i wouldn't like to see it long term or be a long term option and the reason is you don't want to be playing with a crutch it's like something that you need to play because what about the day that the physio isn't there or the physio doesn't have the tape or or something goes wrong you don't have time you get there late and you've had that crutch all along then it's going to be in the back of your head all the time and you probably would be at more of a risk just because it's in the back of your head and you'll be more wary of it and you'll be worried about it i don't like the idea of having to play with a crutch if you don't have to play with a crutch so that would be my perspective on it other people have way different ones i know when i was in america we were with the we were with a division one basketball team a collegiate team and they taped every player's ankle for every training session and every game all of the time now when you look at that over there it's a different kind of a setup in that they each player is on a scholarship they take care of them for the time that they're in college for the four years that they're there three years that they're playing and then after that they don't really mind too much so it's a bit more of a conveyor belt of if one guy goes down, you get the next guy in and they have them there because there's so many players. So And they also have the supplies and the money and everything to pay for that. But when I was there, I was looking at it and I was thinking, I don't know if that's the way I would like to go forward with it because it obviously they are working away grand and all that, but in a way, does it reduce their awareness of the ankle when it's not there? So are they more likely to injure it on a day-to-day? Now, that's that's just my own opinion. I'm not saying that's a possibility or that's a chance or that's a fact or anything like that. But I just think that you don't want to be playing with a crutch if you don't have to play with a crutch. And yeah, if it, if it does reduce your risk of injury, which it does for some people, then it might be a viable option for a small while. But I don't think you want to be doing it all the time. And that's basically my, my take on it. So guys that's everything for me today thanks a million for listening in again uh i should just put it at the end that i obviously mentioned that foundational mobility there for anyone who's looking for a structured plan if anyone is interested in working with me one-to-one send me an email at mobilitytutor at gmail.com or you could send me a message on instagram and we can we can talk through it and see if we're 
the right fit for each other. So I work with people from all backgrounds. It doesn't have to be sports specific, but if you're having problems with your mobility, if you're having issues, let's say with pain and tightness or recurring injuries, I like to take a holistic approach to that stuff and look at it. So we obviously, we set goals and we try to achieve certain goals, but there's a huge educational component to the coaching that I do. And we do a weekly call every week and we discuss um, different things of what came up and what popped up. And obviously there's a program in there that's changed every week as well. But the call on a Monday and the check-in on a Thursday are usually very educational based. So if you're interested in learning more about it and learning more about how the body works and how you can take care of yourself better, then it's definitely for you. Other than that, though, that is that is uh, everything that I wanted to cover today. Guys, if you were listening to this on iTunes, I would love if you could add a rating or a comment um, and just let me know what you think of it. And it goes a long way as well uh, in terms of bumping up the podcast. So it'd be a huge help. The next or other thing that you could do that is a massive help would be if you could share it on Instagram or share it on your stories. Um, again, that's a huge help if, of getting it out there. And if you feel you know anyone that would be interested in it, I'd love if you could send it on, guys. Other than that, I hope you took something away from this. Uh, Thanks a million for listening again, and I will chat to you all again soon. Have a good one.